Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here with us this morning. Got a big show lined up. Another guest here in the studio, but first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. Today looks pretty comfortable. It will be a little windy, but it's going to be a high of 74, low of 58. Water temperature right at 66 degrees at the end of the pier. That's really, uh, really good. Next week, I'm, I'm promising you, next week's going to be good if the weather just holds on right there. Take a look at our riverings brought to us by Panama City, Coca-Cola. Good folks down there. We're looking at the Apalachico of Blunstown, 16.6. And it's getting ready to peak out, but it's still rising this morning. And uh, getting ready to peak out probably sometime today. And the Choctahatchee at Careville, uh, again, on the rise. This morning at Careville is reading on an 8.2. And on the rise. But it uh, should be leveling on out maybe tomorrow. Uh, but still, it's going to be high water, it's like... Our tide chart brought to us by Ken Forest Lawn. Today is March the 28th. We've got some tide and Saturday's tide. Take a quick look at the Saturday's tide. If you're fishing this weekend, it's going to be strong. Today's tide will be right in the middle of the day. It'll be high at 1143, and it'll be low tonight at 1004. And the wind will be north, northwest at about, guess what, about 15. So uh, it's going to be blowing again today. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, folks, and welcome, Captain Rick Corley. Good morning. Always glad to have Captain Rick on, and uh, we got all kinds of brought all kind of cool stuff to talk about. But <laughs> I have a lot of stuff too to share, so we're going to try to merge it together in one all big right. show. So let's look at the uh, the first picture I want to show. Uh, you remember yesterday morning it, uh, it was doing the show, but uh, it was at it hail up there in Liberty County, and I'd heard about it. The weather was really bad east of where we are. Mm -hmm. so we had some really bad yeah. weather, storm, yeah. big time. And what happened, the, the fronts had just sort of collided right there and set there, and that's when you have a bad storm. Well, this morning, I've got, well, right after the show, uh, Matt Carpenter sent me, this is yesterday morning, okay. Uh, Matt Carpenter up there in Liberty County, while working, I came across several miles of hail from the storms that passed through the area overnight. The turkeys might not gobble this morning. I'll say they won't be gobbling, uh, <laughs> but that was that was a, a man. Some kind of look at it, look at all that. Yeah, and that was coming. I'd heard it was the hell was uh, hitting. You would not want to be out hunting in that. No sir, you're out <laughs> back. Look at that feelings. side wow. of the road there. Wow, <laughs> that is something. I, and one more picture there. Look at it all over the grass and all. Yeah, and I'll, that'll damage the hood of a car sometime, too, ding yeah. them up. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, for sending those to us. I know you get up early and go to work. Also, I know you get up early and go turkey hunting. So, hey, <laughs> so, he's yeah, early riser. Just <laughs> day, day like that just to keep on working. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Captain Rick, of course, first thing people know is that bandage on the side <laughs> right there. So tell us what's going on. Number two frying pan. No, not really. <laughs> uh, no, I had, you know, I, I beat melanoma on the left side mm -hmm. uh, 17 and a half years ago. Well, they found it again, and so that's what they're doing is uh, uh, Dr. Sincera took it off, and uh, I got to go back this morning and make sure we've got it all. He's doing the pathologies on it. You now. made a comment before the show how much you think of him. Of what He's the best dermatologist anywhere around, because I tell you what, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Uh, he, he's yeah. something else, and uh, yeah. I've got, I'm going to see him next week, and he's coming on the show probably one day next week. We're not sure whenever we'll get in the schedule, but he loves coming on. And uh, that uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, I, I told him this morning, I told Rick, I have three friends this week getting cut on, and uh, so I better get some more friends. I know. Hey, well, I told him, I said, I don't know if I want to be your friend or not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a lot, uh, something in the water. It happens a lot. It's just something. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, especially when you get older, you got to get, get it checked. And, uh, yeah, you do. Don't, don't play with it. And, of course, melanoma is, is, is serious. Yeah. But uh, I'm not 
really over concerned about it because I think yeah. he's got it all. That's if he don't, right. he'll cut me again today. He'll, he'll keep going. I told him, I said, you keep whittling away, there ain't going to be nothing left in 30 years. I told him last time, I said, we're going to quit, quit coming to you. All you do is cut us up. Hey, <laughs> well, you know. But, but Well, that's good. Yeah, now, the yeah. thing is, the little nurse that he's got is cute as a button. Oh, and she, good. I didn't even feel the needles. Yeah. I mean, when she was dead in it, she did a really good job. And uh, she races sports cars. Oh, so cool. yeah. I, I used to do that when I was in high school. That whole school. staff is so good. Oh, they're great. He's even got his wife up there working with him some now. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how busy they are. And I, I guarantee you, some of y'all out there right now watching the show, they need to go get checked. So, yeah. You, know, me you live in an area here, we get enough yeah. sunshine. Because I don't get out much anymore, and, and still, I oh, came yeah. up with it. Why? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We, we talk about that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, men and women, we, we need to get checked. Yep. Uh, we're talking about we love talking about history and different things going on and uh, our heritage and you know we've had Captain Rick talk about his dad Captain Tom Corley and what a, he was the last steamboat uh, pilot. In, in, yep. In, in this area. When they shut the river down to steamboats in 1928, he took the last one down and tied her up. Man, wouldn't you have loved to have been on that trip right there and, and with a video no, camera? No, because I wouldn't be here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we could just be in a time capsule, that yeah. would be a great yeah. trip to go on. Well, I, you know, we ran the last sternwheelers on that river with ours, the Louise and the Grey Cup. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started out running tug and barge yeah. when I was 14 years old up and down that river. And uh, well, uh, yeah. we have such a rich heritage. Uh, I bring up a lot about boats here in the Florida Panhandle, from the from the bateau boats that are built up on the river by the uh, the fishermen themselves to mm -hmm. the Prescott boat builders or oyster skiffs here in Panama City and Bay County and over in Niceville where they built these nice fishing boats and it. It just, and then the Carter Crafts, our heritage of boat building is, is no one seems to recognize it other than just a handful of yeah, us that well, have a deep appreciation. Well, that's what built Panama City mm -hmm. and Panama City Beach was there were four families. Well, more than four, but there were four major families. Mm -hmm. the, the Davises, the Andersons, the Hobbs, mm -hmm. and, and the Raphaels. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, they're all kin to each other because they were all fishermen and they lived here. Mm -hmm. And so and they yeah. intermarried, you know, uh, yeah. Over the years, they they became cousins and so on. And Freeport had a had a very good uh, had a real deep port. They built some yeah. nice boats over in Freeport. We'll uh, take a quick break and come back and look at some of these pictures. We'll be yeah. right back. Okay, welcome back. You know, Captain Rick Corley is talking about all kinds of things, but now we're going to get into some some really interesting uh. uh books and all. And this, tell us about this. Yeah, this is The Voices of Apalachicola, and it's written by Faith Eyes, E-I-D-S-E, -E. and uh, it's about the Tri-Rivers. And of course, a lot of people don't know you can go up to up to Apalachicola and it turns in to the Chattahoochee and the Flint mm -hmm. right there at the first lock and dam. You go to the right and go on up, you go all the way up to Bainbridge to the bridge there, that's 27 miles on the Flint River, or you go straight on, and when you come out of the lot and you go straight north, you'll go on up through the George F. Andrews and then right into the uh, Eufaula. And Lake Eufaula up there, I think that's the Walter F. George. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can go on to Columbus. Well, from Apalachicola to Columbus, Georgia is 251 miles, or 261, I can't remember which. Uh, but somewhere around that length, 261, I think is right. Uh, and then if you if you go into uh, Bainbridge from Apalachicola, it's 105 plus 27. Okay, all right. But uh, you can go up there with, uh, used to go up there with seven and a half foot of draft. Uh, mm -hmm. And right now, they they make appointments to get up through the locks and dams, and there's three of them. But, uh, you, it's still a good navigable river, yeah. and some really good fishing in Lake Uvall. Yeah, and no, Lake she, but she wrote this book. She got to interview a lot of folks and all. Oh yeah, wrote it back in the nineties, yeah. and a uh, really good book. There's and one chapter in here on Dad because he was the last steam, steam steamboat. He was the last person okay. to have first class pilot for that uh, river. Okay, here's the uh, here's the story she wrote. Uh, Tom Corley, the last steamboat pilot, and uh, and Martin had a comment. 
from Mark Twain, and then uh, the whole story. But you're going to read our stories in there. And here's a picture, a picture of your dad in the book. Yep. Uh, and what, what a, an amazing guy he was doing all the things he got to do. And well, then, during World War II, of course, he was in the Navy and in World War II. When mm -hmm. he came back here, he was uh, the liaison officer for the United States Navy for the building of the Navy base out there. Yes. Here's this map you were just talking about. If yeah. you go in here uh, from yeah. the Apalachicola, you go up there, and of course, right in the center, the, of course, Chattahoochee, the Young River Dam, and, and like I say, Flint River is off to the right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going north, you're going to go northeast, and it's 23 miles to Bainbridge. Yeah, 27. 27 miles to Bainbridge. Of course, you're going up, the Flint River it, it has all kinds of yeah. way up there around Albany and all. But then you go, if you go left, you stay, just stay on the Chattahoochee River. And go up there to Eufaula. You got the George F. Andrews, and then you got the Walter F. George, and then you, and then you 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 can't go any further than the Dillingham Street Bridge on the uh, Chattahoochee. And it's from and, uh, once you get out of Florida, it's the Chattahoochee. It's not the yeah, Apache It anymore. becomes the Chattahoochee, and uh, yeah. and they get up. And your dad was well, spent a lot of time in Columbus, didn't he? Yep. Uh, yeah, he, well, he was born in Columbus, right. so was I. Yeah. But I was raised in Phoenix City across the river, and then we uh, came back down here in 54 and uh, started building a motel marina. Yeah, I, I know uh, there, there were folks uh, that used to uh, love to just go from one point A to point B all the way up and down the river. Oh, yeah. Well, when my brother was 14, my older brother, uh, he and Charles Johnson, Dad built a 14-foot uh, juniper uh, runabout boat and mm -hmm. put a 12-horse wizard on the back of it. And each one of them took a 22 rifle and 100 rounds of ammunition for it. And, of course, vina sausage and potted uh, meat right. and crackers and all kind of stuff and a, and a two-man pup tent that Dad bought from surplus store. Mm -hmm. And they loaded that all in the boat, and he arranged for the, all the Lions clubs down the river, mm -hmm. like at Bluntstown and at Eufaula and, um, oh, heck, I can't think of the name, Georgetown, I think. Uh, anyway, down around where the, the George F. Andrews lock is. Well, back then, it wasn't but two locks. Mm -hmm. And he left, I think that was in about 1950. Two or three, somewhere along yeah. there. The two of them left, and they would stop on these sandbars at night, pitch that mm -hmm. tent, and spend the night. And they'd shoot squirrels or mm -hmm. you know whatever they could find to eat, and they'd cook, and they'd come all the way down the river. And of course, as they come up on these towns, they'd stop, and the newspaper would come down and do a story on them, oh. and and. Uh, the Lions Club would check and make sure they were okay and everything uh, was doing all right. So they went all the way down the river? They came all the way down wow. the river and then came from Apalachicola over to uh, our property that, that we had that, where his lighthouse is now, Lighthouse mm -hmm. Marina and Grand Martin Restaurant. Came in and of course the News Herald met them here and wrote the story up and the Lions Club met them here and made sure they were all right. Of course, Dad come down. We took a trailer and brought it down, and I got to ride down it with Dad in the, in the truck and bring the trailer to bring the boat back. How long? How long was that? Trip? They were five days. Five days. But uh, they had a ball, and of course, made memories. And you oh, know, yeah, Tommy's yeah. now my older brother's now 85, yeah. and uh, he still talk about that. Well, you know, day. there's still when the river gets dry, there's still a group of folks that go camp out on the sandbar. Oh yeah. On. It's just a, yeah. I've done it myself. On it's a pretty farm. river. It's, it's a and beautiful river. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. and so, you know, the Choctahatchee, the Oak Clock, and all of them have those sandbars, and a lot of people spend That's time. where I learned to run on running the Louise and the Graco, two stern wheel towboats we had. Mm -hmm. And the reason, the beauty of the stern wheel towboats was you didn't have to worry about it logs. You know, if you hit a log with a propeller, you can really damage it. Mm -hmm. Worst thing you do is bust a bucket on a wood, you know, a tuba. 12. Right. So you, you, we carried spares. You just take the saw and cut that out and put new ones in. Yeah. And it was real easy to, to, to right. do the maintenance if you needed. So the old stern wheelers were really good on the rivers for that reason. And we we run up and down there. I started running them when I was 14. How long would it take for the trip, say, from Columbus to Apalachicola? Uh, on a towboat? Yeah. About three days. That long? Yeah. Well, you you. 
that's a narrow river, and you you had to do a lot of backing. Take, take your time. Yeah, you had to take your time in some places. There's some pretty tight turns in there, and some yeah. pretty narrow places. Uh, but yeah, usually in three days you'd be down there, and uh, go northbound take maybe four. Yeah. Because you're running up against the current, but. Uh, well, once they started dredging it, it helped a lot. Yeah, the, the 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 thing about it is, I never did understand their thought process. They take and dredge and put it back on the point, so the next high water that'd be washed back in the river. And, yeah, and they said, "Well, yeah. we don't want to put it on the farms." I said, "Why? It's the richest. That's topsoil that's come off. It was rich. I mean, it grow anything. You get that that river bottom sand when they pump it up like that." I often, I often never, wonder, I, said, I, saw, I would see those dredges out there, and I often wonder you know, uh, how, how many artifacts and all kinds of oh, things that, that they churn up and never saw them or whatever. But I Harris know, heads, Harris man, heads, you, yeah. A uh, bunch of them. Because this was a big area for Choctaw and mm -hmm. Cherokee and Seminole, mm -hmm. all these Indians up and down in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I bet those guys got to see some once it rained and all that. Louis Tesser and I used to go out at um, Breakfast Point yeah. And, and Long Point, and I'm I'm here to tell you, I don't know how many arrowheads and spearheads and tomahawk heads we found out. Oh, there. cool! I right, got to take a quick break. Be right back, Captain Rick. All right, welcome back. Let's take a quick look at our fishing game time today. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 151 to 351 this morning. This afternoon, 2.14 to 4.14. Before we get back with Captain Rick on a lot of his stuff, i got a couple of pictures we need to show and share with you. Check this out. This is Mason Lee. He said, Coach, the bass bite is on fire at Lake Wimico. Well, you remember Bobby Smith and I went there. Look at that nice bass. Wow. He's catching Look how pretty that is. Got that one right there? Good job, Mason Lee. And also, I want to congratulate the Liberty County Anglers they went out to Oklahoma, folks. Uh, you heard me. Oklahoma fished the 2024 Bassmasters High School Classic. That's big time. So they won the uh, high school here in Florida, and folks, they ended up getting a fourth place finish, which is quite prestigious. So we're super proud of Connor and his captain, his dad, Joel Beach. We're proud to make the trip, and where to go, Connor Beach. And here's some pictures here. The High School Classic weigh-in. Uh, back there last Saturday on my birthday. Look at there. Wow. What a what a great trip. Representing Liberty County in the Florida Panhandle, fourth place in the nation. Good job, Connor Beach. All those boys, good job. <laughs> Let's see. And here he's getting interviewed, like on TV. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Okay. So we want to congratulate you all. Real proud of you all, Mason. Good job on those bass. All right, real quick, got some other stuff. A couple other books. Okay. These were written by uh, David Cole. In fact, Daniel Cole. Daniel Cole's the, dad. My, yeah, dad. Uh, and if you ever want to read what it's like to be on a tugboat, those are two really well-written books. And uh, we uh, we had a conversation on the phone here uh, not long ago. Of course, he's retired now. But uh, I got to call him a little later. I, we saw what happened up at uh, Baltimore. Yeah. And uh, that's a shame, but uh, it happens. Yeah. You know, it, well, maybe we might get him to come on the show one time with Daniel then. Yeah. Now, absolutely. you saw that picture, that big, that, that picture. Yeah, this is a Sprague. This was the largest stern wheel boat ever built. And there's enough wood and in that, that was stern here. wheel. That yeah. was well, you know, it wasn't here. It was up on the Mississippi River over there on the lower bank. Oh, part. okay. But that it burned down on uh, on the uh, Ten Tom Waterway. Okay, she was over there, and it used that to. That's huge. It, that, it's a huge. There's huge. enough lumber in that stern wheel to build 25 houses. <laughs> I'm serious. That's just in the stern wheel itself. Just in the yeah. stern wheel itself. Yeah, but that boat moved 77 barges at one time, and was a record until back in the late 80s. Uh, the Robert W. Kyle. Uh, moved 88. We moved them from New Orleans up to Baton Rouge, and wow. we had two 3,800 horsepower boats up on the, each side of the bow to act like a thruster okay. for making the, some of the bends. We moved, and then we dropped 48 of them at uh, 
um, Baton Rouge and then went on up with the rest. But wow. that's the largest tow that's ever moved on the Mississippi River. Wow. 88 barges at one time. 11, 11 wide and 8 long. That, that's strong. And each barge is 195 foot by 35 foot. That's strong. So it, but, you, you yeah. can calculate the size of it. It's huge. Now you, we talked about it before, you've gone around the world. Eight uh, times. Eight, eight times <laughs> with the boats and all. And you yeah. see some of the same, uh, same kind of, I guess I want to say the same design and all in the two oh, yeah. boats and, and most, yeah. uh, most areas have yes. the same design. Like yeah. different countries, no matter what, is the same. No. It, 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 you know, water doesn't change. Okay. It's, it's like the guys yeah. used to say, well, why are you doing that? You know these waters real well. I said, water's water. It don't matter where you go, it works the same way. You just got to know how deep it is, you know, and where the currents go. Yeah. But I, I used to get amazed at some of these people. They get in a certain area and they're very yeah. comfortable and what they don't want to go any place new. What were some of your favorite ports or favorite places to go? Oh, I really yeah, got... there's a lot of them, but oh. one of them I, it stands out is Melford Sound on South Island, New Zealand. That is one of the prettiest inland waters in the world. Wow. In my opinion, the prettiest that I've seen. I haven't seen everything, but yeah, I've seen a lot. Well, you've seen a bunch. I've been around yeah, the world eight I times, have. but uh, I've uh, always heard about a beautiful place, New Zealand. Itself. Oh, it is uh, a fabulous place, and the people are nice. Yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. they're they're friendly, and and they don't they don't do stupid real well. They don't tolerate. It. <laughs> uh, in fact. Uh, if if well, things that, don't get better that, here, I, I, really if I was younger, I'd be considering pretty, going down I there. I heard people going down there. Really yeah, they, they, they uh, like people. Well, you uh, got to be in the sheep business down there, though. That's uh, a big that's a big industry. I bet. Yeah, uh, I've seen the pictures. Well, we're going to run out of time, but next time you come on, we'll talk about some of those trips you took and maybe sure. find some find some pictures of New Zealand or whatever in some of those boats, and that'd be interesting though. Cause I got to dig through the box. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot of guests that have been around the world eight times. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, Captain Rigg, well, I always appreciate you coming on, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, tell Dr. Sincere to, to treat you right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so right. far, so good. I mean, you know, like I say, he's going to make me look like a pencil. He's <laughs> pointy-headed. <laughs> All right, thank you, folks, for watching the show. We appreciate the viewership. You do something good for someone else today. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.